Thank you. I'm so glad that you all are here this morning as we come together in worship. I'm certainly glad that you all are here and joining in this time. Uh, let's see, are, do we have any announcements this morning that anybody wants to uh, lift up? I think uh, Tony DiPietro might have an announcement for us. Are there any others? Good morning. Um, my name is Tony DiPietro. Um, I'm your uh, co-lay leader along with Travis Wharton, um, who, who couldn't be here today. And um, I just want to do a, a real quick announcement um, regarding the process uh, of discernment for the future of our church that's happening over the next several months. Um, and what I just wanted to say was um, I just encourage you to, to please participate. Feel feel like you you can and, and and that this is for you because this process is for you and me it's it's for all of us over the next several months um and you know it's probably important because it's in this bulletin it was in the prior week's bulletin it's been on thursday thoughts email so there's so it, it's here right in your bulletin and if you don't have a bulletin um please please grab one on the way out it's got a lot of dates and times and information in there for you um and just briefly i just want to point out a couple things. Um, I think what, what this is, what this process is, it's, it's information sessions regarding the future of our church. Um, and it, it's designed for all church members to attend. Um, and, it, and it's to explain the different options available to us as a church. And, and we're just asking you to please kind of prayerfully can consider that, okay? Um, and also just what it's not, it, it's not a pastoral decision. It is a decision for our church body to make. 
Um, and, and it's not something that Pastor Josh brought upon us. This is, this is a phase of our church, um, it, not just us, but the entire United Methodist denomination is working through. Um, and and it's, these, these information sessions are not an attempt to persuade you. This is, again, for us to learn and understand options um, that we'll have to vote on together as a church. So um, if, if anything, that first date is going to be Saturday, February 11th at 1.30. So if you've got questions, I, I think there's our first chance to get together and kind of ask those questions, okay? And there are going to be several sessions to follow all the way up through that um, May 20th date at 10 a.m. for the vote itself, okay? So again, thank you for that. Just just want to highlight what there's a lot, lot happening. Tony, and yeah, so th this is something that church council decided on as going through this process. Uh, in case you want to know, I don't actually get a vote because it's you're the church and you get to choose how the future unfolds. And so uh, actually my future is actually in y'all's hands. Uh, so have fun with that. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, that aside, because again, it's very important and I, and I appreciate your willingness to be a part of it. Uh, you also probably got an email uh, here this last week about a survey that I would like you all to fill out. Uh, the more that fill it out, the better the results are, and those results are going to come to me, and I'm going to use those to help shape the ministries of the church going forward, uh, no matter what our decision is. And so that way I can help us go into the next step, next generation, figuring out everything we can do and the best ways that we can do it as a church. So I really would appreciate it if you could uh, go find that email. We'll probably send a reminder email early next week for those who might have lost it already in the influx of emails. But uh, the, min the more that fill it out, the better my job is and the better that the results will have for all of us going forward. So thank you for that. And I think those are all the major announcements that I have. Let's turn it over to the praise band. Good morning, Grace Church. We welcome you all this Sunday morning, and uh, we would like you to stand and, and join us as we lift up our praises to the Lord. With all the blessings that uh, God pours out on us, we, we just need to turn that back around and praise Him in the good and the bad. We just uh, continue to praise the Lord and lift Him up in all that we do. So please join us as we sing.
Well, good morning again. As we continue our time of worship, let us come together as one body, as one voice, praying our opening prayer together. So would you join me in an attitude of prayer? Loving God, we come this morning seeking to abide in your presence. Open our minds to your spirit of wisdom that we may know how to live as your people. Open our hearts to your spirit of truth, that we may love all your people with a love that speaks of justice, kindness, and radical grace. 
May this time of worship be authentic and pleasing to you. Amen. Amen. And now we will ha- take up an offering and the, the bells are going to be playing for us. And so I invite those who are going to help me with the offering to come on up and the bells to assemble yourselves. Let us have a time of prayer. God, we give you thanks for all the blessings that you have poured out upon us and all the ways that you continue to bless us each and every day. Whether it's the very lungs, the very breath in our lungs, very step that brought us here this morning, or the fact that we were able to gather together to worship you in this space. God, we thank you for all the gifts that you've given us. And God, we pray that in this time and in this space, we can in turn give our gifts back to you. The things that we have been blessed with, may you use them as you see fit, whether they through our actions or our words, or even through the financial means we place in these plates. God, we pray that you bless each and every one of these gifts and everyone who gives in every way that they give, so that you can use these gifts to build your kingdom here on earth, just as it is in heaven. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
now I believe we're turning it over to Miss Linda for uh, Young Disciples. So all of those who would like to come up for Young Disciples, I invite you to do so. I think we're going to congregate in this area. So come on up. Sorry. So, how many of you like to do puzzles? You like to do puzzles? Good. Well, puzzles is one of Harley's favorite things to do, and there's all kinds of puzzles. There's word puzzles, there's number puzzles, but then there's jigsaw puzzles. So, uh, this is, yes, this is Harley's. I asked her to buy. But I need your help because, look, it's a whole bunch of pieces. So, everyone take a couple pieces. You don't want to help? Okay. So do you all have a strategy how you do your puzzles? What? Start, oh, perimeter, you like those big words, perimeter. Otherwise known as outside pieces. But we start with the perimeter. Good job, Marissa. The teacher in me is very proud. <laughs> okay, so who's got some perimeter pieces, some outside pieces? Okay, so you've got an inside, oh, and corners are the best place, right? Okay, so everyone, there we go, another corner. Maeve is good. No. Okay, keep putting them in as you get your pieces, because it's going to take all of us, isn't it, to get this thing. I think this one might be done with Okay. All right. Well, while you're doing this, puzzles where each ver each piece is kind of uniquely shaped, right? It only fits in one place. Well, it's kind of like people. Each of us, God made us each very unique, but we all have to work together, right? So in Romans 12, 5, 6, it says, So in Christ, we are many form who form one body, and each member belongs to the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. But we have to all work together, otherwise we're not going to get the picture, are we? In 1 Corinthians 12, 12, the body is a unit. Shh, shh, shh. It's okay. Everyone works together. Together? Okay, Bristol. There we go. We are many parts. D turn it the other way. Got it because it has to fit a certain way, right? Because in Christ, we are all the body of a Christ. And each one has a part. And there we go. <gasps> Harley, can you hold it up so they can all see? So it's all fixed together. So I want you to remember that as a church, each of us look around, turn around, look at all the different pieces here in the church. We're each a special part of God's puzzle for Grace Church. We all put together what makes our beautiful church. So let's have a prayer. Let me take that too. You ready? Heavenly Father. <laughs> Heavenly Father, can you pray? No. Heavenly Father, thank you for each person here at Grace. We are all part of the body of Christ. Put us together so that we can be Grace Church. Amen. And I have put, brought you puzzles to remind you that you are part of God. So in the bag behind you, you can take a puzzle. So as our young disciples are finding the puzzle of their choice and back to their seats, because there are quite a few different ones. Ah. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. I might have to take one home myself. I'm a young disciple, right? Right? Yeah, okay. 
That's right, that's right. All right. So as we, uh, as we continue in this time of worship, uh, let us uh, lift up and take this opportunity to pray for the needs of the community, the needs of those who are here in this space. And so I invite us to uh, lift them aloud. Uh, there is at least a microphone going around. There's two. Perfect. Uh, so feel free to raise your hand and uh, let us know and wait for a microphone so that way people online can also be in prayer with us as well. So let's lift our prayers. For the online, you do. <laughs> Um, I want to pray for two of my daughters who are teachers up in PA and for all the teachers everywhere that they can start and focus on educating our children instead of worrying about being threatened or Amen. shot at or harmed in any way. Right. Amen. Um, I just, I'm asking for prayers for Bill Thorgood. Um, he's um, not doing well um, health-wise, so if we could just lift prayers up for him and his family um, that are caring for him right now um, and also I have another prayer uh, if we have some prayers for Morgan Jones she's not feeling well um, she's going through a lot so if we could just lift her up um, with prayers thank you I just want prayers for Ingrid Swenson I think they had to take her to the uh, emergency ward today because she can't stop her nosebleed Mm. So keep her in your prayers, please. Um, just keep Mary Lou Rollison in prayer. She is in the hospital. And Ruth Hudson was. I don't know if she's still in the hospital or not. Um, but uh, good news that Miss Selma Monroe has been moved to um, Brandywine Marie. Harrison, I knew I would say it wrong, and Georgetown. But praise God that she is in a safe place for her being yeah. taken care of. God, I pray for somebody that I might see. Pray for someone you might see and share Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Are there any other prayer requests? Any in the balcony? Okay, I am not seeing any others, so let's in this time come together in a time of prayer. God, creator of all things and knower of all things, God, we come before you to give thanks. Give thanks for all the ways that you are at work in the world here and now. And God, we give thanks that you want to be in relationship with us and you give us prayer as an opportunity to communicate with you. And God, we have so much that's on our minds and on our hearts, God, and we lift it aloud to you. We pray for our teachers, God, and we pray for their safety as well as the uh, strength and encouragement to keep doing the work of teaching our children, continuing to be leaders for our community as they continue to share the gifts that they've been blessed with with others. We pray for those who are not feeling well, for those who are sick, for those who have had to have been hospitalized, God. God, you know every one of those situations. And God, we pray that you are with them, that you are with the doctors and the nurses and the caregivers, all of those who might assist, that you have blessed them with the gift of healing and that they might help do your work and will through them. God, we pray for those who are transitioning to new living accommodations for their health and for their safety. Uh, God, we pray that the caregivers there also protect them. We pray for their families as they go through the, the struggle and worry of transition, but also understand the necessity of it. God, we continue to pray for each and every one of us here in this room. We know all the things that are going on around us. We know about our hurts and our pains and our sorrows. And God, we pray that you speak to each and every one of those. God, for those who are about to have surgery in the next couple of months, we pray that you are present in and with them in the midst of all the prep work and the anticipation that comes for it. 
For those who have lost loved ones, God, bring them comfort and peace and remind them that they are not alone in the midst of this hard and difficult journey. And God, for all of us, as we continue to seek after your will, be with and abide in us, caring for our needs, reminding us that we are your children, and showing us new and exciting ways to continue to follow after you and serve you with every fiber of our being. God, we thank you for all the ways that you're at work, all the prayer requests that have been lifted aloud. God, you know them and are already at work in them, for we know this to be true. And so we thank you, God. We thank you and we love you and we join together as a body of faith, as children following after your will and your way, joining together in the prayer that your son taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now let us join together in our hymn of preparation, Seek Ye First, number 405 in your hymnal if you need it. The scripture this morning is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of God is a gift to God's people. Good morning again. 
Let us all join together again in a time of prayer. God, as we continue in this time of worship, be with us and be in us. Send your Spirit into our midst so that we might receive you, that we might feel you, that we might encounter you, maybe for the first time or maybe for the umpteenth time. God, we pray that in this moment, in this space, that you open us up, that you open our eyes, our ears, our mouths, every fiber and pore of our being, so that we might receive you, that we might hear you, see you, know you, and understand you. God, we pray that as you continue to pour out upon us, that we continue to draw closer to you, and that you continue to work in us and change us so that we might be more like you when we leave this place than we were when we came in this morning. Help us to follow after your will and your way. Help us to understand these gifts that you have given us that continue to give so that we might also continue to give. Continue to be in us and help us to understand you with all wisdom and discernment. For God, I pray that you speak. Use me as you see fit. Speak through me so that your words are heard and not mine. For you are the one we have come to worship and adore. Help us all to receive your word in a new and fresh way, a way that is understood to cause us to follow in your will and your way. Help us as we take on this poetic challenge that you lay before us, as you take on new and exciting ways to teach us. God, I pray that you move us ever so more to you. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, one thing that you may find interesting to know about me is that I am one of those people who loves musicals. Anybody else want to? Okay, good. I'm not alone. Great. Musicals have the ability to move me, not just because of the stories and the songs, but because I am in awe of the people who have excelled at this craft. Being able to sing well and dance with joy are gifts in and of themselves. But when exercised at the same time, wow, mind-blowing. The ways in which my heart and mind and soul are beckoned forth by an individual's command of a vocal movement or the communicative focal expressions or a well-timed delivery of a line are truly holy in and of themselves. Church, I feel the same way about the craft of the spoken word, the way in which individuals can craft words and soliloquies and use tone in order to challenge and comfort an audience is also holy and awe-inspiring. Some inspire with soaring orations, while others captivate listeners through their calm and careful speech, while others might use jokes and anecdotes to keep people going along. Like many others for whom using words well is part of our calling, pastors included, I too often allow myself, I too often allow myself to be confined to a narrow understanding of how the gospel can be shared usually defaulting to too many words from the pulpit. But church, it takes discipline and discernment to preach or to write with brevity and through a different medium and form. As some may make jokes about public speaking in general, they may make this general statement, I didn't have time to write a thousand words, so I wrote two thousand instead. And though Twitter, though Twitter may have its faults, sometimes we need the encouragement to rethink 
the verbosity, the verboseness that we often rely on by limiting our characters to a shorter amount. Maybe even saying what we need to say in just as short and as few as 140 characters, which was Twitter's original character length. People got too long-winded, they had to up it to 280. But again, can we say what we need to say in just a short bit? Church, I believe that the Beatitudes, what was just read in this morning's scripture, are the best of Christ's poetic expression of faith. Not only a challenge to what we do in our faith, but a challenge for me and others to express ourselves in different and unique ways. Jesus is still using words, but this captivating portion of the Sermon on the Mount is a challenge to think about not only what we share, the important message, but also how we share it, which Jesus does through poetry in this morning's text. To think that Jesus, in all of his infinite wisdom and sermons, decides that in this moment to use poetry to reach the hearts and minds of those who are around him. In this passage, not only are we given insight into the kinds of things we need to be attuned to in this world, the poor, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger, those who are merciful, those who are pure of heart, the peacemakers, those who are persecuted. Not only are we supposed to be attuned to them, we are also being challenged to hear and express these profound challenges in different and more creative ways than we have been in the past. How might we help the world know to take care of the poor? How might we speak to the needs of those who mourn? How might we serve those who are feeling small and meek? How might we demand justice for those who hunger and thirst? How might we care for those who are merciful and make sure that their mercy is felt by all around them? Those who are pure in heart, can they be felt? Can their love be shared? Those who seek peace and not animosity and war, how can their message be heard louder? And how can we be the advocates that help broadcast that message to the world? Maybe it requires us to do something a little bit different than we have always done before. Jesus decided to use poetry in the middle of his sermon to help do the work. Maybe we need to do it through song. Maybe we need to do it through things that we are uncomfortable with, or maybe something we are comfortable with doing, but have never used in a religious manner before. What are some of the things we love to do? Maybe we love going to sporting events. What if we went to sporting events? God seems to think that that's a good idea. Go to sporting events and share the love of God with those who are around. How can we care for those in need? How might we continue to love and support those who are in need of love and support? Church, this is where we can find our calling. And maybe we can do it in a new and unique way. You see, the simplicity with which Jesus talks about who is blessed is brilliant, is it not? This is a radical message made clear and memorable for his hearers because of its poetic power. This should be held as a reminder that in order to share the challenges and calling of faith, we must be creative in our expressions. Maybe we use more words. Maybe we use fewer words. Maybe we have better crafted words, or maybe we don't use any words at all. Maybe we do it through art through paintings, through song, through dance. Maybe we use all forms of expression, all ways that we communicate with one another. Because then with these expressions of faith, they must take the form in order to speak to the many ways in which people take in information. I know that not everyone gets my sermons on Sunday morning because they don't want to just hear it. They want to live it. They want to experience it. 
And so that's why maybe we need to challenge. Or maybe it's the environment. It's nice and warm in here. We're starting to feel a little sleepy and tired. Maybe we need to challenge ourselves and once a month go worship outside. Ah, I was waiting for some shots of going, no, it's too cold outside. But, you know, maybe. Maybe in the summer. We'll figure it out. Spring, spring, maybe. We'll figure it out. But maybe we need a change of venue. Maybe we need a change of scenery. Maybe we need a change in how we do what we've done. Because there are different people in the world. We are different, just as we are all different puzzle pieces that make up the puzzle. We all have different ways that we fit together, different ways that we connect with the world. So our challenge today, church, if we're going to call it this poetic challenge, I think I will, is how can we join in God's creative work and continue to share in the poetic challenge of spreading the message of God to the world? And even so here in the town of Millsboro. How might we let our creative God work within us to challenge us to new expressions and new ways of thinking so that we might better communicate with one another and with all around? If no two people are the same, then it stands to reason that we do not all think alike, nor do we hear and understand things the same way. And if Jesus is willing to vary up his methods of reaching people in order to reach more, should we not be willing to do the same? How might we use the ways that God has created us to renew and reach new and further places? What might be the creative parts of ourselves that if we truly allowed them to be expressed openly and unashamedly, be able to do to continue to serve God with our whole being. Church, the truth is, there is so many different people here as a part of this church, and each of us come with our own creative, let's say poetic, characteristics. And within the beautiful mosaic of the church, family, we have the ability to reach all around us, both near and and far, so that we might continue to hear one another, speak to one another, and serve one another, just as God invites us, and through this morning's text, poetically challenges us to join in doing what God is already at work in doing. So how might we go about it? What are the things that are unique to you, things that you strive at? Do you do well at drafting and design? Build institutions that help house people who are in need of homes. Are you good at speaking politics? Go to town hall and speak for the needs of those who need a voice to be heard. Are you good at art, dance, song? Use your gift to show how God is at work in your life and in the world around you. Maybe church doesn't just have to look like a sermon on Sunday morning and song and worship here in this space, but maybe it can look like this all around the world. Maybe going to a new place, a new location, sharing the message there in new and exciting ways. Now, I'm not saying that what we do here is wrong by any stretch of any imagination, but if Jesus is varying up his work, Sometimes maybe we need to do the same. So the poetic challenge that God has put before us, that Jesus has proclaimed in his message at the, on the Sermon on the Mount, calls us, are we listening? Is it speaking to us? And do we take this message and move forward as the mosaic, as the puzzle that we are? Because when all of our pieces come together the way they're supposed to, using all the parts of ourselves, we are able to be more fully the body of Christ we're called to be. So if you have gifts, use them. If you don't know what you have, come talk to me. Let's figure it out. But let's accept this poetic challenge because God is with us and God is working alongside us and invites us to do the same.
Amen and amen. And I believe the praise band has maybe another song for us. So as we, uh, as we close today, we'd like you to stand and join us as we uh, sing about all the blessings that uh, God just pours out on us. And um, we just ask that the Lord uh, bless all of you and, and, and keep you uh, throughout the week as we go from this place.
favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you he is for you much to say after that. Let's go in peace with all of this in mind, knowing that God goes with us everywhere and anywhere we go. Let us share these gifts with everyone. Go in peace. Amen and amen.